when he looked and he shot the second time. Now this time I felt the force. As I started falling back, everything got so dark, but it wasn't an ordinary darkness. Like it was, this darkness was like, I, the best way I can describe it, it was a lie. The attributes of fellowship, love, hope, laughter, uh, just the things we take for granted. Like, you know, just, they were leaving me. Right in front of me, let's say 100 feet, maybe 200 feet, there was a pit. And these pits were filled with people. I saw these giant, reptile, muscular, huge. And, and, and as I'm looking, and these people, the, the despair and the pain, the demons were feeding off of the people's pain. Welcome to this episode of Revelations from Heaven. My guest today is Dominic Morrow. Now, his story began in the gang-infested area of Chicago when he joined a gang and he was shot and he was killed and he went to hell. I'll be talking about this. This is one of the most amazing accounts of hell and a God-honoring story of hell uh, Dominic, uh, you have, I think to this day, suffered from some form of PTSD, have you not? Yes, yes. It's, uh, the experience, um, is beyond, like I was saying, the scope of anyone's imagination, you know, uh, for the, 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 the encounter and the experience that I had. It is, uh, yeah, so I definitely, still to this moment, um, even my wife can, uh, definitely, uh, agree and say that uh, it's hard for me to sleep a lot still because I still have different, you know, just, you know, it's, it's, it's like I'm there still sometimes, you know, even certain smells, you know, especially like uh, if someone is using sulfur, like uh, matches, it's like I'm saying, like if, if no, somebody knows how it smells, if you burn a book of matches, that smell kind of like a fiery smell, even if I smell anything of that nature, it just kind of fireworks, sometimes barbecue grills, it's just certain smells that, you know, it's, it's pretty, it takes me back. Yeah, as I noted, Dominic, this is one of the most gut-wrenching stories of hell I have ever heard. And that says a lot, because I've heard a lot of stories, but this is incredible. And why don't we go back to um, getting into the gang and where you yes. were, uh, you know, in your faith. Did you have any faith? Uh, yeah. What? What? How did you go into this situation that led into uh, your eventually entering hell? Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. Um, you know, I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, of course, but I grew up in a multicultural home, you know, half Latino, half African-American. Uh, you know, our family is, have a lot of different cultures in it, but a lot of I grew up and came across uh, um, on not my uh, Cuban side, the Latino side, the uh, Santeria, the study of saints, you know, uh, the worship mm -hmm. of saints and, the you know, things of that nature. Then you had like my grandmother on my African-American side who really uh, was was the light of the family. She had, you know, gave me some basis of of the Lord, you know, of God, you know, and uh, but I ignored it. You know, I kind of ignored it because my environment kind of dictated the way I was feeling towards God at that time. You know, so I knew God exists, but I saw a lot of other things on the other side that I knew that the supernatural world is definitely real, you know, because I was never naive because of the environment I grew up in. Uh, but in Chicago, unfortunately, um, I love my mother, but... Um, you know, uh, my father uh, passed away when I was young, so she was raising me and my little brother and sister. Um, and she unfortunately became addicted to crack cocaine, and uh, that changed everything um, in our lives. And on top of the environment we were living in, so it it was really, really, really rough on me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was just tired, and I had the wrong role models growing up. Um, you know, the, you know the drug dealers, you know the pimps, the thing, you know the cars, you know the girls, the jewelry, you know those mm -hmm. are things we were looking up to. You know the devil lied to us; we were lied to. You know, and uh, we thought those were the things that would make us happy. Those things was, you know, 
uh, a protector somehow. But, um, you know, and, and that's what I did. You know, I ended up joining the gang by the time I was like 12, going on 13. Um, you know, in Chicago to join the gang, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's real. It's not a, it's not a joke. You know, it's, it's a commitment. It's a life changing commitment. You know, and, um, they don't take it easy on you because of your age. Actually, they make you do more things because of your age, because I was so young, uh, what we call missions. You know, I was sitting on a lot of missions because I, uh, I would get charged as a juvenile if I was caught. So they do abuse, use the juveniles more because of that purpose. Yeah. You know? You know, that yeah. uh, being from the Chicago area, I know when you're in a gang, yeah. you can't get out of that gang, right? No, you're either you anything in the gang or no, you're no, out of the gang uh, with uh, your be heart not beating yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's over with. Yeah, there's no, it's that, yeah, if you're in, you're in. And the only way you're getting out is through death. That's that's the oath, you know, pretty much. Um, I'm not going to, I always say I'd never glorify, I'm not going to name the street organization that I was in. But yeah, very, very uh, international, actually, you know, the gang I was in. But um, yeah, it, it was just growing up like that. But one thing that I knew God was always in my heart because I love school. I was always self-educated, always, always. School was like my safe haven. Books, you know, would take me away from the environment that I was in. So I always excelled in school, you know. And it's unfortunate that in a culture, you know, this demonic culture, you know, where I'm from and a lot of different cultures can, can vouch from what I'm saying. You get made fun of for being smart. You get made fun of for being intelligent. You mm -hmm. get made fun of because you like to read and write. And I, that, I know that's from the pits of hell itself, mm -hmm. um, that type of thinking, you know. But that was my safe haven, you know, was, was school. And, uh, but when you get hit certain different parts of the streets, you know, it's time to man up. You know, I don't care what age that you are. Once you sign up, you sign up, you know. So as years passed, I got pretty good at that uh, to the point where I was pretty uh, making enemies within my own organization, street or organ uh, my own gang. Um, I was hearing, you know, different rumors of, you know, hey, we don't watch out, man. You know, we were hearing your own friends want to rob you. Your own friends want to set you up, you know. And uh, I'm like, nah, no way. Because I'm thinking, you know, I mean, I mean, this is like my family here. You know, this is years of loyalty you know, that, that, that the gang life together, you see things and go through things together. You build a bond, mm. you know, it's like being in war together. It's like uh, a comrade, like, you know, that's, that's, you know, you know, you're, you're, you know and uh, so I, I just said, no, nah, you know, I let my guard down, but this fast forward, um, we had a rich, uh, I would say a tradition, may I say in Chicago, uh, you know, by then we had a lot of money. We were doing well for ourselves. Unfortunately, you know, selling drugs became great at that. Um, but, Every Friday night, we would go to the clubs in Chicago, and, you know, we have to go shopping the day before. You have to have a new outfit when you go out where I'm from. So, you know, me and my friend, we were going out to go shopping, and uh, this is June of 2009. Um, and in my district, there's over 500,000 people. So it's so many people. It's so crowded that, you know, you, you can rarely run into a person within a few hours if you're going shopping, because the stores in different districts are so far apart, especially in Uptown or the South Side, you know, Stony Island. I mean, it's so big, it's so spread it apart. You're not going to catch, you know, run into anybody just coincidentally. That's kind of. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming out the store and I saw this guy, he was sitting on his car. And it just instantly, this is my stomach, you know, I just felt something wasn't right. It just, he looked, he looked at me, me and my friend said, hey, how you doing? Okay, no big deal. We go to another store on the other side of our district, okay? We come out again, this guy's sitting on the car again, outside, sitting on his car, and his car was running. So I looked at my friend and said, hey, this guy's following us, man. And my friend, you know, he kind of laughed and kind of smacked me in the back of the head. He was like, dude, you, we're not that important. You're not that important. Nobody's following you, man. You're paranoid. What are you talking about? So I said, you know what, maybe, all right, maybe you're right. Well, a few hours later, we get dressed, we're going out, I come outside the building, it's this man, he's standing in front of the gate in front of our building, okay? So I said, okay, I'm going to have to ask this guy, who are you now? I, there's something in my heart now. Something is not right about this guy. So as I walk up to him, he had a cigar in his mouth. And he asked me for a light. So as I'm digging in my pocket, I said, okay, I said, do I know you? I was going to say, do I know you from somewhere? But as I'm reaching down, I looked down, all I saw was a green flash. It was a, just a flash. I just, I, I can never forget, it was just a flash I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything. I just saw a green, like a neon green flash. 
So I look down and everything's like slow motion. And I look up and there he is again. He has the gun again. He shoots me again. Mm. Now this time it was like slow motion, but the look in his face, you know, uh, it was just like a so evil, like I got you look. Like it was a satisfied cut, but it was the, mon I, I can't, the, the fabric of the hate was different. It was more intense than the regular earthly. It was, just, it was like, yes, like I got you. Like, you know, you know, like a joyful off of, you know, someone else's misery times nine, you know. Uh, was he in an yeah. opposing gang or why did he shoot you? No, I was going to find out. That's the point. He was supposed to be in the same gang that I was in. Mm -hmm. But he was brought in from a different section to take me out from my supposedly friends and my gang family. Wow. So he was in the same, he wasn't even in opposing. No. Wow. He was in the same gang. Yes. It's kind of like yeah. eating your own. I mean, that's, yes. that's brutal. That's, yes, definitely. Definitely brutal. Yes. But that, that was the, that was the case in that, you know, and I do want to say that, you know, I do want to give thanks to him. I really do because he actually took my life, but he saved my life. Literally. You know, so in, in that in that aspect, definitely from the perspective, uh, perspective, I mean, of the kingdom and of our Lord and uh, living in me and the Holy Spirit, I see things totally different. And if he wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be you know, living this life for the Lord right now. I wouldn't be dedicating everything to God that I have right now. So he saved my life. Wow. You know? Saved through yeah. hell. Yes. That's that's pretty incredible. I mean, that's so you're you're you've been shot now. Yes, and... I'm still experiencing physical pain, permanent nerve damage, all types of things going on still to this moment, you know. Um, yeah. Wow. And that and and at that point you were bleeding out, I assume, and uh um... Yeah, see well the second this this is this is where it happens. Uh when he looked and he shot the second time. Now this time I felt the force. I I felt it, I smelt even more, but the weird thing was instantly I started falling back. I felt like a, I was getting hit with a sledgehammer. The force behind being shot, people don't understand, it, it has a velocity behind it. It has an impact. So I flew the second time. It got me. You know, I don't. I can't explain the first time how I stood there. I just like everything was in slow motion. But the second time, I flew back and I started falling back. Okay, but now this is where everything changes, and this is where my life changed forever. Um, as I start falling back. Everything got so dark, but it wasn't an ordinary darkness. Like it was, this darkness was like I, the best way I can describe it. It was alive. It was a darkness that was so dark. Like I said, you can blindfold yourself, bury yourself, blindfold yourself again, put yourself in a tomb, put that tomb somewhere under the ground, and it still doesn't describe this darkness. It had mm -hmm. a spiritual component to this. It wasn't a regular darkness. Wow. It was through me, in me, and it was a sadness. It was beyond. Uh, 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 description. Now, the, the weird part is because I was laying on my back, but I was falling forward. Ooh. I was falling forward, but I knew I was, I fell back, but yet I was falling down face forward, but yet on my back, looking up. See, that's the weird part. It's hard to even describe. I was laying on my back, but yet I was falling down. But as I'm falling down, it is so fast. It's like the, the fastest, like I say, it's faster than the speed of light. Uh, it's a different type of speed, you know, like they say, uh, I said it was 186,000 miles in a second. It's faster than that. It's a different form of speed. Mm. You are, when I'm talking about the spiritual side, everything is maximized, but it's so different times a million. You don't lose your senses. You can see better, hear better, smell better, taste everything. Your functions and your senses are heightened beyond description here. Like when you're in the spiritual realm. Um, so as I'm falling down, in this darkness, and see, you guys don't understand how much God loves us, okay, on a daily basis. I realize that we're all protected daily, okay? We're buffered from so many things he's keeping us from every single day, okay? And what I mean by that, because as I was falling, the terror that I felt, I had no limit. There were no limits to this terror. There's no limits to this. See, here, we can, you know, either you have a traumatic experience that's so bad that you are faint. It's like a safety mechanism, right? You physically, you'll kind of pass out so you won't, you know, be too overwhelmed. Or it's only a fear that gets capped off. It has a limit here. There's only so much you can get afraid here on earth. 
But when you, when I, that place that where I was falling to, the fear is maximizing and maximizing as I'm falling. All the attributes, and I knew these things. I knew everything. It was like everything, the attributes of God that are in us were leaving me. Mm. The attributes of fellowship, love, hope, laughter, uh, just the things we take for granted. Like, you know, just, they were leaving me. You could they feel that. Me. You could feel them yeah. leaving you, just coming yes. out of you. Coming out of me. This, the, like the darkness of, was it, stripping it away from me. Wow. The more and more faster, and it, and it was being replaced by despair. That it's a despair and a regret and a hopelessness that is un. Oh, it's a despair of like oh, the same way. Um, it's kind of measuring time, uh, measuring time versus eternity. There's no really no comparison because time is inside eternity, right? So, this form of despair is a different realm of despair. It's a different form of regret. And that's what the, the attributes of God leave you and you're replaced with those, the emptiness. The, the, the emptiness is alive. The emptiness mm. has purpose to be empty. It's hard to even explain that. Mm. Uh, so as I'm falling, I'm falling. And then one thing I noticed was the smell. Okay. This smell even has a spiritual, the smell of it even has a spiritual component. If you was to even smell this, like I keep telling everyone, if you was to smell the smell, you would die right now. If it was here on earth, it was to be one, just one whiff, one, one whiff. Mm. Your body wouldn't be able to take it. Your body wouldn't be able to even compute how to even operate, how to even withstand something like that. It's beyond the smell. The smell is even, but then I noticed it was a glimpse of, it was like heat, it's hot, hot. And so I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm getting, and to see like, I want people to try to imagine. I'm trying my best to describe, but as I'm falling, the more and more, I'm afraid of more on the scales going up more and more beyond horror, beyond it's, it's, in the loneliness. There's not, you know, there's no, it's, it's nothing to help you. There's nothing, you know, your body, you're alone. The loneliness, like I said, the regret, the despair, and then just this new, the, the, the smells, the, because I just remember it coming outside. The thing that got me was the, the, the how fast the two dimensions it was so instantaneous. I was just walking off the building, asking this guy a question. Now, what is this place? What, it's just so many things at the same time going through at, at one time. Now, as I'm falling and I'm feeling the heat, I see a little pin light. It's like a little light, but it's so bright. And I'm falling. Then I started to hear. I mean, um, see, one thing what I say is hard to describe. When you in your spirit, in the spirit, when I'm, from my experience, I knew that I knew I, there was no, nothing to learn. There was nothing to learn. There was nothing to figure out. There was no time. There was no, it's hard to even explain that. But I heard all these screams and they were getting louder. It's like as the light was getting bigger and bigger, these screams. And it, but I instantly knew there had to be billions, hundreds of millions, maybe billions. Mm. But these screams are all, some were, uh, uh, cursing out God. Some were just in agony, the pain. Some were making sounds that I can't even mimic. But the thing is, the weirdest part is when I was hearing these things, they were all screaming, but yet I can individualize each scream. Mm. Just say if you was in, uh, in, in a stadium at a, a baseball game and everybody's screaming, you can hear everybody screaming, but you cannot make out each individual. But no, you can make out simultaneously at the same time each individual scream at the same time. Mm. It's hard to wow. it's hard to even fathom these things. Like I, it, it's hard to even say. But as I'm falling, and then this this little light, what I thought was a light, it looked like an old well, like an old rock cave system. But it was so hot, it was the stones that were illuminated that were orange, white, piping, white, hot, yellow. It was just hot. It was a portal. Because when I got to it, it was so hot, and I hear the screams and the smells. I was so overwhelmed. It's hard to even uh, beyond sensory overload, mm -hmm. because we're so used to being in the body. Like I said, the Lord, our, our Father, and our Father God has protected us from so much we do not realize. There, the Father's not there. Mm -hmm. You're stripped of every attribute of Him. It's like He's not allowed. Pieces of Him are not allowed inside mm -hmm. of Hell. 
So there's no relief. There's nothing. The things that we take for granted, the sip of water, every little thing. I knew all of these things. You start to know and you regret. It's a sense of regret. Like, oh, I took them for granted. No, like, a, no, I took them for granted. Like, you know, I just, uh, oh, yeah, I, it's, it's, and this portal, but it looked, and the thing is, I want people to understand, I instantly knew I was still here on earth, but I knew I was in the earth, but it was in a different dimension, but it was still here on earth. I knew I was still here on earth. So and as I got close, it was like a, um, the best way, I, what I coined it is called feel C. It's like a, it sucked me in, but it was a, it was, it absorbed me with a force, but it was, oh, it just sucked me in. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of indescribable in a way, but as I suck, I feel right back instantly into this darkness, the same darkness that I would just felt from, but when I entered this portal, but it threw me and I felt the thump and I, and I felt so, uh, hurt and heavy when I hit the ground, I hit the ground and I was still in this darkness. And the first thing I would never, I remember, I will never forget. It was, a, a, I heard it was a, and it was right before me, right in front of me, let's say a hundred feet, maybe 200 feet. There was a pit and it illuminated everything. It was like instantly, once I looked at that flame that illuminated from that pit, everything, I could see everything. I could see where I was. And there were rows and rows of pits a line where in, in these pits were filled with people, hundreds of people in pits. And some of these people, okay, uh, were fully, you know, uh, naked, no clothing, but some of them have full bodies. Some of them were just pure bones. Some of them look like, uh, had f uh, a flesh still hanging, uh, a zombie uh, mm -hmm. type look, but they were in lava and trying to scream, getting out like crabs in a barrel over each other trying to get out. But the thing that got me, that already was beyond, but we're really, like I told you, your fear keeps going. Just when you think you're scared enough, you see the thing and it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. When I first thing I looked up, I saw these giant reptile, muscular, huge. And some of them had, uh, the eyes were like blood red with the, the slit of a snake, like a reptile, like a, a, a snake will have a reptile eyes. And some of them had the bright yellow eyes with the slits, and they were all different sizes. Some, some of the, some of the demons are even smaller. Like I said, as this pen. And to me, those were the worst brutal ones. I'll explain that in a moment. They were this small all around the pit. While people were trying to get out the pits, the giant was grabbing them, and they had like these old rusty spirit things. So when people were trying to crawl out, they were laughing, grabbing them, throwing them back in, stabbing them in, and they were enjoying it with so much joy. And I want to explain to the people the hate that came from these demons, from these creatures. It is so ancient. That's the first thing they do is ancient. And it's a, they hate you so bad, you all. They hate us so bad. They hate, like I say, if the hate can be weaponized, we're in trouble. Mm. He said, remember I said, God buffer us from so much. Their hate alone would de penetrate and destroy your physical body. We mm. do not understand their hate alone. They hate us with so much zeal, so much beyond the scope of which you can. They they feed off destroying you. Because mm. I, I instantly knew and I instantly felt that the people's pain, the people that were trying to get out the pits, and these demons were torturing them, throwing them back in and laughing. It's, even when they laughed, it hurt my whole body. I want to make sure everybody know this as well. When you're in the spirit realm, there is no such thing as a nervous system where your pain is sectioned off. You feel everything one time. So just say if, if you get uh, smacked in the face, you will feel it instantly from your head to your feet, all at the same time. That's the best way I can describe it. It's not sectioned off. You feel the pain all at the same time, simultaneously, all over your body. It is not sectioned off. So that's what makes it more excruciating. That's what makes it more painful. Wow. You know? Wow. Yes. Yes. Mm. And the demons were feeding off of the people's pain. It was like they were eating. And that's what I know now. The Lord put in my heart. And I know that that's why they cause so much chaos in our families, in our lives, uh, 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 depression, anxiety, because they're eating from it. That is food for them. Wow. When you have faith, no doubt, being double minded, demons are literally eating off of that. They feed off our depression. So they make everything happen around. Every situation that could go wrong, especially if you don't have God, if you don't have faith, you become depressed, anxiety, anger. They love anger. Anger is their favorite. 
because of the burst of the energy. It's more impactful. It's like a quick, good snack for them. I'm just telling you, they feed off all of these levels of association where they make these things up so we can feel this way, so we can feed them. Wow. That's the instant. Yes. That's, that's, I mean, I'm just telling everyone, I'm trying to warn everyone. Yeah. That's exactly why they keep you in a state of flux up and down, you know, up and down emotionally because that's food. So they get their Plans. energy off of us getting angry or, you know, yes. just whatever. I mean, hate, all yes. of these things just feed them to mm -hmm. grow more energetic and able. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, as I'm looking, the first thing I've noticed and that's what came. I told you the formal regret. It felt like I was wearing a big wetsuit that weighed like a thousand pounds. I could not move. And the first thing that came to my mind comes from God. Free movement, like I'm moving now. That's the first thing that came to my mind. It comes from God. And that was stripped away. So my, even my movement, it was so hard. Like I said, it felt like I weighed like 900 to 1,000 pounds just to move. And I was so used to being in my physical body. The same principles do not work out. But I was snatched so fast to this dimension. I didn't know. I'm still used to being in my physical body. So I'm not moving this fast. You can't move as fast. And then I thought I was breathing. So then I really started kind of hyperventilating because I started panicking. Not only what I was looking at, then I realized I can't breathe. So I'm trying to go, and I can't. Is it? It's like, there's no oxygen down there. But I'm panicking, going quick, going, trying to breathe. And I can't breathe. It was just the 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 impact, the overload of all, everything at one time is un, uh, can't even, uh, I'm trying my best to describe it because the experience is so overloading, sensual overload at the same time, it is, you can't even, it's beyond, it's beyond, you know, so bear with me, you all. Uh, I, it's, it's, I don't know how you're, you're getting through it, brother, because I mean, this, this is, this is to, to, to say it's overwhelming or heavy is, is an understatement. I mean, wow. Wow. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. All, all praise due to the Lord. You know, mm. there's no way, you know, because it, it is hard for me to talk about these things, to relive it. But I know this is not me. It's not about me. I signed up for the kingdom. So it's not about me. No more. There's nothing to do with me. So I'm doing this because he's telling me the boss, my king of kings, my best friend, your best friend told, told me I have an assignment and that's, that's all that matters. So, but it, it is, it does take a lot of energy. And I know he's with me and talking through me right now, even to be able to do it, you know, because you, I didn't want to do it in the first place a long time ago. My wife yeah, um, got me to get the testimony out here because wow. without her, I wasn't going to even bring the testimony out. But the Lord said it's time, I guess. So well, I, I credit you. So when you were looking at the people that were there, Whoa, I mean, yes. were they, I mean, of all different, any sense of all who different they were? Nationalities, all different uh, nationalities, cultures, uh, ages. Uh, yes, and it's, it, the, the, the fear, the, but the thing is overwhelming all through, you know, my tour of hell, may I say, uh, the, 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 the overflow, the regret, the sense of, you know, I should have, would have, could have. It is beyond anything. Mm. Because, you know, instantly what started to happen, the longer I spent down there, what happens is you start seeing all the invitations from the Lord. You start to see him, how many things he showed up, how many warning signs he gave you. You start to see the people he used. And you're like, oh, oh wow. That, yes, that, oh, it plays out. He shows you everyone in an overload that would have, should have, could have. Oh, it was so plain to see that was you. Oh, no. Like, it's in that on top of everything around you, on top of the pain, the heat. I didn't even get to the heat, how the heat feels. It's a different fabric of heat. That's It's, it's a different, whole different caliber of heat burn. It's, it's not even, it's not, that's an understatement. It's, that's spiritual. It's like this, the darkness was spiritual, the heat. It's a different, it's like a, uh, it's a, it feels like it always, it, it, it always just got started. Yeah. You ever burn yourself and at the, the thousandth mm -hmm. of a second, that first, the most, the prime of the first, ah, put it that way on loop. The first, like it always the first time, always on loop. Wow. That's the best way to describe, like you keep feeling like you're getting burned just for the first time all the time. Feel like it's just starting. 
that's the best way I can kind of, you know, summarize. You know what I mean? Put oh, yeah. That. Well, because if you get, if somebody gets a, a burn, it'll be just, no, very painful initially. But if it burns through, you know, right. a second, third degree can be painless. The person can right. not feel the pain because the nerves right. have been killed. What you're saying is kind of like the nerves never... I mean that God no. built into the body so that it can numb the you know numb the pain, but yes. that no, you're saying dead. it's just increasing, increasing, increasing. It's fresh. It's fresh. Wow. It's fresh. There's no no relief. There is no such thing as relief. See, even on a micro or macro scale of relief, there's no such thing. Even on a micro scale that God loves us so much that we overlook on a daily basis. That comes from him. It is none. There is no detail of him at all. Mm. Like, whoo Yeah. So, yeah, everything is fresh. So there is no getting used to anything. Mm. You know how some people may have in their imaginations, well, I can get used to the heat. I can get used to the fire. I can get used to the, right? No, no. You can't get used to the first time. Every time. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. Wow. Give it all. And, um, and, and as I'm looking in these people, the, the despair and the pain, see, the thing is they're feeling, you're feeling physical pain that's beyond comprehension. It's hard to explain. That's why I keep saying at the same time. Then you, you're feeling your regret. You're, you're experiencing your regret at the same time. You're experiencing the terror of all of these creatures. You're in a foreign place, like all at the same time. It's not compartmentalized. Like here, we have a lot of stresses and we can compartmentalize the stress, you know, but no, it's all boom, all on one plate, all at the same time. Mm. That's the best way I can describe it. I'm looking at these things and the giants are so, see, everybody keeps, you know, this tough talk of humans, of our arrogance and pride. You know, oh, I'd go to there, I'd beat some demons up. Listen, there's strength. First of all, you don't have anything. And I, one thing I noticed instantly, feel like I was thirsty, like I haven't had anything to drink in months. See, time doesn't exist, you all. Time doesn't exist. That's another thing that smacks you in the face. You know that you know this is, you're done. This is forever. We can't even imagine eternity right now. If somebody say, imagine forever. You can't imagine forever. That's mm. how, but when you're there, you know forever. Because mm. you are in forever. You are in eternity. Wow. And I knew this is forever. She like, you know, a lot of times when I lived my old life, when I was in the streets, when I was, I used to go to, when I was in jail, I had hope because I had an out date. Mm -hmm. So there was a form of hope at least like, okay, well, at least I'm getting out on this day. I can try to start over and not there. Mm. You know, there is nothing. And then, you know, there's no people that know that you're there. You know, there's no way that you can get a communication to people. You can't uh, say you're sorry to people. You can't you all of this at one time is just overwhelming. While you're looking, you can't move. You feel like you're thirsty. You feel like you haven't eaten or drinking anything in months. You're looking at some creatures that are so hideous. And also that smell, mostly 80% of it came from them. They stink. Mm. They're the most horrible, ugly, grotesque. Hollywood cannot come close. Some of them look a little similar. I see a couple of them that kind of remind me of, uh, of the, especially the little ones. Oh, these little ones, the little demons are so hateful. They hate you so bad. The hate from the, I call them the little guys, like gremlins. You know, that's why I know a lot of, a lot of things that are going on in movies and things, they have to be seeing this because some of them are spot on with how some of these things walk. You know, so many things walk the way some of these dances are. Some of these popular dances that the young people are doing these days, that's how some of these demons walk. That's how I know it comes from hell itself. Some of this culture. Wow. wow. Yeah. 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 It seems yeah. like they're in a perpetual state of decay. Oh, oh, horrible. It's so deformed. They're very deformed. They're not a lot of the only ones who I've seen that are so uh, almost uh, humanoid were the giant ones, the big ones. They were proportioned right arms in the right places, legs. But most of them, their arms they were highly disfigured. Some of them were they, they looked like they were doing a moonwalk, like Michael Jackson did when he walked, because they their whole torso was backwards, and the way they walked looked like they were gliding. They were so deformed and hideous. Some of them had hair and looked like this reptile. I saw I, mo I noticed a lot of the reptile thing though, from a lot of them, from the way they look with the scales and the the you know. The teeth, the facial structures, a lot of them had a reptilian, reptile, crocodile look. 
you know, uh, some of them had a lot of look of animals, bears. A lot of them looked like some kind of bear, gorilla-looking creatures that I saw, I encountered, um, and the, the insects there. Okay, now, uh, as I'm looking up, and I, I'm terror, I can't move, I'm trying to move, and I'm looking up, all of a sudden, I feel, I can feel behind me, it's like, like something walk behind me. And you can just know it was massive, it had to be huge, because when it grabbed me, the 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 claw or the finger was so thick like this thick and it was a claw like this long on it and it grabbed me and it just threw me like i was nothing like i was just like i say the strength of these things nobody can do anything all the tough talk don't count there mm -hmm. you can't do it wow i mean the way it just threw me it was just like whew. and now uh hindsight looking back i know the lord had to be with me there uh, because a lot of the pain that I think was being taken away from me, I, I didn't feel the blood. I knew, you know, now looking back, I was supposed to be hurting a lot worse uh, from the things I experienced when I was there than I really did. I just think the Lord was giving me a spanking, uh, a tour, so to speak, because I'm here right now, obviously, because I thought I knew I was done, you know. And that's when people, I want you to realize, the icing on the cake of all the despair that really got me, Beyond all the heat, terror, smells, torture that really got me is the fact that I knew I deserved to be there. I that's had the, no rebuttal. That's the most no shocking rebuttal. part that you. That was the most. You knew you, had, you deserved to be there. Wow. I deserved to be there. You know, and even if I was questioned, I wouldn't have a rebuttal. I wouldn't have. I realized all of my selfishness. I realized like you realize so much gut wrenching details about your personality. Your gut wrenching details about how selfish and greedy and arrogant and prideful you really are, and that's I, I mean it's a, it's to a degree that I can never go back. I can never ever go backwards. You know, it, it was you know it, it's just it, uh you know I, I just uh yeah yeah it just changes everything when you look at it from the way the perspective of eternity instead of temporal things, and that's why now I view everything from the perspective like he said in Colossians of eternity. Not earthly things. Mm. Everything is eternal. Everything has a cost. Everything has a price. Every mm. detail, the conversations, just because you forgot. No, it's imprinted on everything. Mm. The impact of your words, you know, and uh, we're going to get to that here in a second. But, you know, as I was tossing, I got hit and I, it's like I hit a side of a wall, like a stony uh, a wall. But I'm trying to, and as soon as I look up, it was a mountain. And this is like the unusually highest, biggest mountain that I've ever, but this mountain was not a regular mountain. It was a mountain, but on the sides of it were jail cells. These old jail cells, rows and rows of perfectly, like tier after tier, as far as you can look up of cell cells. And instantly, I knew, I said, these people have been here for thousands of years. You instantly knew ancientness. You're talking about ancientness. It's an ancientness about that, those cells and those people in there. And I instantly knew why they were there. They were there because they were witches, warlocks. They were uh, Baal worshipers, uh, baby sacrificers, uh, 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 psychics, uh, you know, mediums who talk to demonic forces, uh, spell, voodoo, everything that you can even think of. People who worship the uh, 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 elements of the earth. You know, like Wiccan and all of these other elemental worship things. Every, I'm, I mean, and I knew these people being here biblical, even maybe before biblical days. The ancientness of these people in there, and the 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 anger. They were the most, and they were so angry. Some of them even started looking like reptile look, like they've been there so long and they're so angry and they just so, like some of them were just so frustrated. And, and uh, I want to remind everyone, that's why you got to watch your words. Because in, and when I was in a spiritual body, the demons had their own language. And when they talk, it hurt. It literally hurt. Every time I heard them speaking to each other, it hurt my body. Mm. That's how disgusting and degrading even the language hurts us. That's why they call it curse words. It comes from the pits of hell itself. Ah. Do you see, like, people don't understand, like, you all, it's a strategy behind all the chaos. It looks chaotic, but hell is highly organized. Hmm. There's order in that chaos. Definitely is. Wow. But and, and, like I was saying, these people that have been in there, I mean, for every, I mean, everything, and I've known, like, people, who, and then who made it worse for these people who were in those cells, they were in there. 
because they they not only were sinful themselves, but they made others fall and stumble. See, mm -hmm. they were the leaders of these cults or wherever. They were kind of like the leaders or very important people in high places that made so many other people stumble and, and turn away from true God mm -hmm. and start worshiping demons and stuff like that. Wow. You know, start worshiping creation, like Romans said, instead of the creator, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, and it just, the, the, like I say, the, the, the level of fear, you guys got to keep this in mind. It keeps going up. I, I'm, I'm steady. <laughs> I mean, the more I'm, I'm trying to move. I'm, I'm the regret, the, the fear, the looking at these cells. I'm thinking the thing that is through me is gonna come back, grab me some more. Like what is going on here? Like just so much. It's just too much to even, you know. Uh, yeah. But then once you stop, it's like the sounds are so piercing. It's just like everything is going. <laughs> Like you inside of a, a, a vibrating, the, the the screams are so loud, it becomes like a solid form. Like you're inside a fish tank. Like you know how fish are inside water. But in there, you're in there under a negative darkness, vibration of the screams are so heavy. It's like you're moving through. You can't, like you're trying to move through because of the, the, the screams and the yells. It is just so... There's no relief. I tell everybody, there's no mm -hmm. thousands of a second or nothing for you to go, okay, let me just get my bearings. There's no such, no, mm. no, no. And the fear level just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop on top of all of this. I'm getting more and more. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get up. I'm trying to get up. All of a sudden, I feel, again, it's, it's like a, like I'm getting picked up. It's like a, a suction. Now I'm looking back. I'm thinking he was just putting me in different because hell, I got to explain everyone. I'm getting ahead of myself. Hell has a lot of different compartments or departments in hell. It's very, like I say, it looks chaotic, but it's a purpose behind everything. And it's a lot of different compartments that specialize in different areas. I want to explain to the people that everyone, we all sin. We all have a wide spectrum of sin. Okay. All levels of association, all spectrum. Okay. But everyone has one, what I call the specialty sin in their personality. One sin that sticks out above all others that you're addicted to, that you do the most, you know, everybody. And that sin that you put the most unconscious faith into and energy into, it corresponds to what compartment or department you will be when you go to hell. Mm. That's what I know. So if you're a thief, they got a section for you. You're a fornicator, they got a section for you. You know, you, 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 you know what I mean? You're promiscuous, you're, you're a gossiper, definitely have a section for you. Mm. It looks chaotic, but it's highly organized. Like I tell people all the time, don't underestimate the enemies because it's more, they have the structure of hell and the structure of, of the dark forces are more high, more organized than any army here on earth. I mean, every demon has a job nonstop and they have to do it. They have to serve their purpose. They have to, or they get tortured. They're not, they're not following Lucifer. There's no love, remember? They're, they're not following Lucifer, some, some kind of loyalty. No, they're doing it all fear. Mm. They have higher-ranking demons. They have lower-ranking demons. So as I get thrown, I feel this sucks. And I get thrown, I get tossed again. But this time, this is instant. What I see, as soon as I land, and I'm rolling, and it's like I get, boom. It's like it's a different kind of force. Now, I open my eyes, and a lot of things, you guys, I'm minimizing for the sake of time. And also, there's a lot of things that are brutal. That's what I'm writing the book on. Uh, I, I don't want, I can't say on here, but I'm going to get close as I can because it is so graphic and it is so disturbing. Um, this part of hell, which I already knew, this section, instantly knew, this is the part for uh, sex, sexual, people who are addicted to sex, uh, you know, uh, pedophilia, uh, you know, uh, just uh, anything that had to do ungodly sexual acts because the first thing I saw is a stone slab table and there were multiple demons demons of uh, raping a, a young lady. Yeah. Um, but I try to tell people, uh, but this wasn't, uh, it wasn't normal. Um, like I said, you could take the most worst pornographic movie and it does nothing. It's nothing. Um, all I can say is, um, Every uh, 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 cavity in her body was being penetrated by these monsters. 
eye sockets, ears, every, I mean, from all sides of these things, ripping. And one thing you all, when I realized, this is what I really realized in this level, um, I saw people flesh get ripped off and in, immediately it'll come back. Like, for example, uh, if your arm get ripped off, it'll come right back. Hmm. Remember I was saying earlier about that first time, how it feels like it's the first time. So if these things will rip you apart. They, I mean, they're eating you, ripping you apart, and it will come. It will, you will just come right back together, hmm. and experience. And they do it again, and do it again, and they invite other ones coming over. And remember, they they're feeding off the energy, like it's just like. And but this place they had the torture, and this is the first time I saw this. It, it disturbs me to this day. I call it the human shish kebab. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Where the, these these giant demons were taking the uh, sexually perverted men. And they had these big, big spears, and they would grab the guy and put it under his, you know, and, and stick him through until it goes to the top of his head. Take like four or five people and put them on a stick, pick them up while they're on the stick, and they scream and walk off with them. Hmm. And drove big giants just putting people on sticks, and they just putting them on, and they're carrying them off somewhere while they're screaming. You had other demonic people uh, uh, ripping off, uh, you know, private parts and using the private parts to, you know, harm themselves and it was just that's the I don't want to get too graphic but it's just beyond and I knew these are the people who are sexually promiscuous who abuse sex you know uh, even demonic magical sex all types of things that I was not aware of you know uh, in the dark world you instantly know and uh, so many people do things and don't realize there's no such thing as a harmless act there's no such thing as just you know this is not that you know uh this wow. is like yeah, sadomasochism, yeah. some sort of stuff. Yes, everything yeah. you can imagine under the sun. That you know, because we as humans, and one thing I did learn in hell, we always minimize our sins so we can feel comfortable doing them, indirectly or directly. Mm. We always minimize our sin. We never mm -hmm. look at it because it doesn't work like that with our Father God. He looks at everything raw. Mm -hmm. It's nothing high. There's nothing touched up about it. Mm. Wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. Wrong is wrong. A murderer is no different than someone who stole a candy bar from a store. Yeah. They don't look, it's no scale. This is not the legal justice system of any earth where there's a felony, gross misdemeanor, this and that. It doesn't work like that in eternity. Mm -hmm. It's either it's this or that. The thing is, it's absolute, but it's also, it's hard to explain because there is, because everything is absolute. But then yet, by the grace of our Lord and our Father, he gives us Mercy, that mercy changes everything. That grace changes everything, you know, throws mm -hmm. a curveball on everything. Yeah. But it's still based, everything is based off absolute because it has to be. That's why the father has no mistake in him because he, some the universe would not be stable. Existence cannot be stable without him right. being what, he's, what he is. You know, to anything had a contrast to compare it to. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the Bible says that, it, uh, you know, if, if a person even thinks, you know, lusting, for example, of a thing, it, that they've committed exactly. that sin. You know, the Ten exactly. Commandments convict, but the grace of God can heal, but that requires Amen. forgiveness, doesn't it? Amen. Wanting to be forgiven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Well, you know, in this, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I just, I'm just overwhelmed with uh, atrocity or even the debased nature of hell and this perpetual state and it seemed like those who were in the cells uh, beside this mountain that they were the ones who were leading others astray they were the ones yes. who were responsible for yes. for defiling uh, others and then you had yes. these others who did they? Did they, anyone cry out? I mean, uh, oh, you know, the why, the, why didn't you? Or you know, how can I get a second chance? Anything like that? You just you, you, you're spot on. I mean, I, I heard people asking for just thirty seconds. Well, let me say I'm sorry. Uh, just the, the the regrets. Any regret you can even think of. Yes, oh, that's all you hear. Like I say, that's what hurt me the most, that power, that form of that despair and regret. That is the most aching because that's how I've noticed the theme of everyone was going through that loop I was telling you about. They had to be going through that loop because they got to the point where they were just saying, let me, they had to have been seeing it in their in their mind to, to be able to say, let me do, do that. Oh, because they were regretting those opportunities and they couldn't help but to scream them out. You know, like, ah, you know, they couldn't help but to just, 
you can't you, you can't hold anything back. You know, mm. there's no filter. So they responded to their loop of the invitations that the Lord was showing them all the times in a way they could have done or could have had and this and that. So the regret is just woo. Mm. Oh yeah, it, it's wow. it's yes. So did that's you, why I ask people. Go ahead. Did you have any sense that people? Uh, you know, well, what am I trying to say? The people were there who m maybe were, they were believing in stuff like reincarnation and I'm going to get the, oh, yeah. all of these all other of different goes, religions yeah. to say you're going to get a, yes. you know, there's another life or something like that. Or, yes. or you know. I also learned that I knew that when I saw those people on the side of the mountains, I learned, like I saw those people, I learned so much in hell. Uh, I knew that instantly that, all of those people who believe in those type of things, who, who uh, the Lord brought me here for a mission. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm here to please our Lord, my Father God. That's it. Mm -hmm. So if I ruffle some feathers, I'm not here to do that, but I'm here for the truth. Um, those people uh, who mislead, who believe in reincarnation, that comes from hell. That is a lie because that makes you feel like you have all the time in the world to get things together. Like you have so many lifetimes to get it right. So then you become relaxed. And you sin and you compromise with demons in a lifetime. And you think you can come back the next time and splurge your life until you feel like you can get it right. That's that's from the pits of hell. This new age that you're your own God, that comes from the pits of hell itself. That's the same story why Lucifer got you know kicked out himself out of the state of heavenly places. Because he said he wanted to be in the same old lie. You're your own God. Mm -hmm. You're not your own God, people. You're not. Mm -hmm. You're not your own God. If you have to use the bathroom, you're not your own God. If you have to work for somebody else and you have to eat to live, you're not your own God. <laughs> See, that's what I'm just telling you. Don't use our father's creation for your creation and say you're your own God. <clears throat> How is that possible? If you're your own God, you would have your own existence, period. Yeah. You don't have to use our, you wouldn't have to use our father's materials yeah. in any capacity if you're your own God. So people, <clears throat> that comes from the pits of hell. Please. And mm -hmm. I'm not here to offend anybody, but I don't play that when it comes to our Lord. The truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we have to start being firm as believers. We have to start really, really, really being honest. We can't be soft, you all. This is, it, yeah, this is tough. Wow. You know, you're, uh, you're here as a brother in Christ. Amen. Because obviously Jesus saved you from this place. Amen. Now Amen. there was something in you that God apparently saw that was worth redeeming, you know, taking yes. uh saving. So yes, you were in this place, but yes. it obviously for, was for the reason to kind of shock a lot of people into saying, Hey, you know, this place is real. And in some cases the non-believer saying, or the believer in something else, small, small G God, that yes. I, you know, I better get right with the one true God. So Amen. you're going through this. Every, it's like you're a permanent resident of hell, but you weren't mm -hmm. a permanent resident of hell because no. something was going to happen to you to save you from this place. Yes, yes. And, you know, and uh, like I said, there's different compartments. I, I uh, there's a lot more to it. And, you know, but um, I have. Every time it's like I like when he would show up, I would get thrown, grabbed, and just it's like he was showing me different, different parts of hell. And uh, you know, just to to show you how everything is so strange, I got thrown. I was at this cliff. Now and I was allowed to stand. You know, now looking back, now I know that the Lord was with me the whole time, but I didn't see him. I didn't talk to him. I didn't interact with him. But I was able to stand, and when I stood to my right. And when I looked to my left, there were people of all races, ages, gender, men and women. And they were standing and uh, I looked down and there was this little path. It was like a little path, but it was like on the sands. And these sands were like in these trees. It was like a desolate, dead forest. But the trees were trees, but they even felt different. It was just a weird thing. Even the sand had a smoky blackness, like charred in this toy. And the, the smell, it was just, but on this little path, and then we looked again. There was a whole line of people, and they were all chained together. And on this, these people who were chained together, they were like uh, uh, prison guards. 
It was these reptile creatures again, these demons, but they were walking in rows like they were organized. But something said, look up. It was an instant look up. And when I looked up, wow, this would blew my mind. Uh, there were gates, 80 to 100 feet tall. I mean, they looked like uh, they used to have jewels on them, but all the jewels were taken. It was just rotten, ancient. But then the castle, it was a castle, mountainous city. That's the best way I could describe it. It looked like an old ancient castle, but a mountain. It was so huge. It was so big. But I knew the terror that came from this place, that if I went beyond those gates where those people were going, I knew that was the real hell. Mm. So what I went through was just orientation. That, those gates beyond those gates. Mm. Yes. See, that's to give people the caliber about what I mean about the levels of, and, and the things I didn't even get, a, you know, the close description of what the orientation, what I call pre-hell was. That's how unfathomable this is, you all. Wow. That was only orientation. Wow. That wasn't even, because I knew if I went past those gates, the the beyond anything, I don't even know where to begin. I, I can't even describe, like, I don't even know, like, but I knew that was, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the kicker. Yes. So there were people that would all, did you have a sense that everyone would go, eventually it was in hell, would go through those gates? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it was kind of like, a, 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 um, okay, like if you go to jail in some cities, um, they, they call it like the pit. I do believe like an intake when you first go to jail, they mm -hmm. put everybody in a bullpen uh, before they register you, fingerprint you, but they throw everybody in one section until they get you classified and organized for your charges, et cetera. I think where I was at was like the bullpen of hell, mm. you know, before you get classified and then you go to that, to that, the, oh. what I call, what I even felt, because something just said, look up. It was just like a front, look up. And I, yeah, I'm look, I can feel it and see it right now. It's, uh, it's beyond, even what, what I went through is beyond. Wow. I don't even know where to begin or the level of, yeah, the magnitude of that type of uh, fear, torture, uh, deadness, darkness. It's not even, it's, yeah, it's no verb, no verbiage, no human language that can suffice for that at, at all. I don't even know where to, how to even begin. So for, the, for these gates, and I know there's a reason I'm asking this question. So that, that, if it was a building or gates that people would go through, did it look appealing or did it look no, decadent? You know what? Um, I was just going to mention that. You know what, what shocks me? You know, you've seen the medical symbol, uh, the medical with the two intertwining right, the circles. snake, right? That's, that's what they had at the top of them. I'll never forget that. Mm. That's what shocks me about why would they have that symbol to represent life, medical life? Why would they have that, that demonic uh, symbol? That's another story, but yeah, but it had those on the top aligned with it. It looked like it used to be beautiful. It looked like there were places where there used to be gems and diamonds in it, right? But it looked like all of it was taken out. When it was mm -hmm. rust and it was old, like it used to be beautiful. Uh -huh. You know, like it was an abandoned, abandoned mansion or something like that. It looked like uh -huh. it used to have the most beautiful type of, you know, gems on it and stuff like that, but it, instead it just had the remnants of it holes and emptiness and blessed and old and the ain't it was just beyond uh wow the oldness of it like i keep the, the best way i keep saying ancient that's just the best the best way i can describe it is it, so ancient the feel of it the smell the look just to everything it's a different type of uh frame of time in itself you know that's the best way you know but those gates were just creepy it's uh -huh. beyond but i just knew if i made it past if i went in there it was it's so wow yeah, uh -huh. yeah. The, re the reason i ask that is because i've heard from uh a couple of uh hell survivors that and one in particular who said that they were before these gates and these very deceptive 
uh, demon spirits who didn't look, you know, they kind of had morphed, it seemed like, into mm. more appealing, uh, yeah. you know, characters. They do that. And yeah. so they said, enter into paradise. It's like, mm. come on in, you know. And then once he went through there, it was like, okay, yeah. then all of this, you know, became a reality. And that's yeah. kind of like it is for a lot of, you know, there are a lot of people who say, yeah, send me to, you know, there are songs written about, uh, you know, I'm destined for hell and looking forward to it. You know, I can do anything. Yes, yes. And it's like that appeal, you know, it's kind of like the enemy wants to say, you know, well, uh, you know, step right in. It's not that bad. You can do anything you want. You can't. Oh, it is. Uh, you, you all, it is. Oh, I mean, the level of loneliness, torture, regret, pain, every, you guys, it's not a party you want to go to. If you hear anything, one inkling of anything that hell is good, it's a lie. Mm. You run from that person. Don't hang with that person. If it's doctrine that even makes one thing that says it's, it's, it's anything positive about it, burn it. Mm. Destroy it. Don't read it. Don't. There's nothing. There is not one because God cannot exist. Like It's not. No. It's not even possible. It's not even. No. Everything enjoyable, anything that you like, anything you relax with, everything you take for granted that comes from our Father God. It does not, they don't have none of that access to those things in hell. None of it. None. No exceptions. There's no VIP pass. There's no party. There's nobody having fun. There's nothing. There's no reunions. That's another mm -hmm. thing I want to tell people. When I was there, you can be right next to a person, but there's no fellowship because that comes from God. You're not allowed, you're not sitting there with that person, you know, let's band together and, and you know, cry with each other. And the, No, you're so absorbed in your own pain and regret. You're alone. Mm. Even though you're in a, a sea, you're in a sea of people, you're alone. Mm. There's no one to talk to. There's none of that. It's nothing fun. There's nothing, nothing at all. No relief, no anything. So you're, you know, I, I don't want people to gamble. Don't gamble with eternity. I want to, I don't want to say take a chance. No, I'm asking you, follow God now. Mm. Don't gamble with eternity. Follow mm. him right now. Right now. Don't put it, we're not promised the next five seconds. Behind each moment is eternity, you all. Mm -hmm. Don't put it off. Now. Mm. I move with it. He told me to move with a sense of urgency. Not only is he on his way, death is always right there. Mm. And, and, and the enemy wants to catch you because he's a great deceiver, you all. And he's he'll blame you. See, he'd throw it in your face, but then say, see, uh, we warned him, we told him. You know, he'll set up the trap, but then blame you for the trap, mm. for falling in the trap. You guys, you have to do that right now. You have to give your life over to him now. It's not about religion. It's about him, a personal, real relationship. That's all. That's mm. all that matters is him. Him. Your mm. personal relationship increases your faith, your courage, your boldness. He also gives you discernment to see the enemy on mm. all forms. He also gives you the discernment to see who has the Holy Spirit in them and not. They can talk good. They know Bible verses. So the demons know the Bible. The demons know how to speak the Bible backwards yeah. as well. The Bible says but that even Satan can cite yeah. scripture for his own purpose. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I just want people to know this is real. This is real. Hell is more real. It's more. See, this, this life that we live in the material is nothing but leftovers, meaning like even the clothes that I have on, it was in somebody's mind first in an imagination. That imagination realm is fueled by the spirit. And the leftovers are the physical property of the shirt itself, right? Mm -hmm. But the enemy have us believing that the leftovers are more valuable and important than the original source of the spirit itself. Mm -hmm. We've been lied to. We put mm -hmm. all of our energy in fake earthly temporary credentials when we're supposed to be packing for eternity. We, we're doing, you know, our aim has been so just diverted because of vanity, ourselves and pride, egos. You know, it's not about us, you all. Mm -hmm. It's not about, mm -hmm. you know, go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. No, I I, you're, to, you're so right, wrong. brother. It's it said people, whether on on both sides, you know, that are destined for heaven and those who are, who are at least at this point destined for hell think yes. that they'll always have a tomorrow. You know, the, oh. there's always going to be a next moment, a next. And I mean, for you and I, there wasn't. I mean, for you and oh. I, 
there was it was oh. like this and we're gone yes. and that can yes. be I've, I've spoken at eulogies for young people but these demons that you're describing they have such a hatred for people Ooh. i mean the angels are obedient to the lord they 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 actually there's there's uh, uh the, the 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 scripture that references the angels actually acknowledging us you yes. know and and bowing yes. before god's god's my uh, best creation which is the one made in his image that's you and me but these that's demons they this. are just Ooh, they are livid. They hate you so bad. That's why I am the most loving person. I love every race. I love every human being with so much love because once you experience that type of hate, you can never be racist. You can never be arrogant or judgment. I'm telling you, once you, if everybody had just one whiff of the demons hate for you will love every human being, you will be running. And there's no such thing. I'm hugging. I love you all. I love everyone. Um, it's a genuine, real, you all, you get a whiff of that enemy, you're going to be begging for human attention. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> what, you're yeah. scaring the hell out of people right now, Dominic. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, that's uh, I, I've got to encourage yeah. for those who are watching, because a lot of believers in Christ are going to be watching this. But I know you've, yeah. you've, you've reached out to me and you said you've got this, maybe it's a son or daughter, a friend, a person that you know who, despite all you said and despite everything you've tried to do, they're just not gonna, they're not gonna come to Christ. Wrong. You've got to, you've got to sit down with them or at least share this with them because they will get the hell scared out of them. And they're gonna have the opportunity and they're watching this right now as I'm even saying that, to uh to ensure that they're going to be in heaven on the day they they die but I, you know what what's what's very interesting to me dominic mm -hmm. is that everything you had the hell experience i had the heaven experience yes. um you actually have probably a stronger testimony than i do because you can uh through your story scare the hell out of people uh so your evangelical impact is so strong but everything you've said about hell is the diametrical opposite of everything in heaven. I mean, it's like everything, yes. you know, wow. that you said, turn it around, the very opposite, the feeling mm -hmm. of, of love, the feeling of comfort, the feel, right. all of the things right. that you say, complete opposite is in, yep. is in hell. But yes. I've got to ask you this. So mm -hmm. here you are, and it sounds like you're at that point wanting to escape and you did escape. Uh, yes. you were, you were the exception. So what was going through your, your thinking at that time to allow you to escape this place? Was it that God was just taking you on a journey through it? Yes. Or was there yes. something that you feel that was inside you that was, giving you the, the get out of, of hell card, if you will. I, I experience, I can't even, he is so magnificent. I, I'm sorry I get emotional sometimes just thinking about it because I miss it so much. It was one, as I'm looking at this place, and I, 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 I remember, I will never forget, in my mind and my heart, it was so, when I'm staring at this castle, hell gate, this place, and I'm seeing those people, I felt, a little touch on the back of my shoulder. And this is, it was, a, I mean, it's beyond a thousandth of a second. Because time, I don't even know how to reference it, it was so fast. But I knew that one little touch, it was him. It was so much love. It was so powerful. Okay, It was so authoritative, but yet so soft, right? Uh, it was so uh, encompassing that it felt like nothingness, but yet it filled everything. It was so, uh, it's the whole fabric of this love and the, the I instantly wanted to be forever. And instantly, just that little touch, like I said, the, the tip of the Lord fingertip has more love in his fingertip that can provide more energy to the whole universe, just on the tip of his finger. The love and the, the, the yeah, 
I, I can't even, it's not even the same way I can't even put in words the terror and the, the horror of the, the, the hellish experience. Like you said, the opposite side of the spectrum of this love. And instantly, it just felt like I was being slim. Just saying, and I got slim. Boom! And just like, it was like a boom! It was like, it was like, a, uh, like I crashed in the water or something. But I was instantly in my body mm. on a hospital bed. And I felt the worst, disgusting, nasty. I felt nasty. I felt horrible. I, I, I really felt like I was wearing my body. I literally, mm. it felt like I had like, uh, if you put on a, a jean outfit, put on like eight of those, but ice cold water. I felt like I was in an ice cold, an ice cold suit. Mm. That's what I really felt I was wearing my body. And I am so, at this point, because it was so instantaneous, I can still smell hell. I can still hear, I can still, but yet I'm laying in this hospital bed and I'm seeing all kinds of equipment and people in the hallway, and it was this nurse in the room. I'll never forget because she turned around and looked at me, and it seemed like they were already kind of wrapping things up. Kind of, I don't know, because it was just the way they had uh, some tools out the way the blanket was folded over me. Um, I heard a lot of people, a lot of commotion in the hallway, you know. Uh, but she looked at me, and I looked, and I'm like, she almost fell. She kind of <laughs> ran out and cut the corner and almost fell running out the room, and they had some alarm go off, and uh, everyone was coming in, running in. And I started freaking out. I, I started panicking, moving because I didn't want to close my eyes because I didn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. I thought if I closed my eyes, I was going to instantly go back to where I just came from. From that, that you know, then I didn't call it hell. I just, it was, <laughs> you know, so they calm down, Mr. Morrow, calm down. I'm, I'm moving, I'm cooping, they're trying to put stuff in my mouth. And I, I mean, I'm having a meltdown at this point, you oh, know, man. I didn't, you know, uh, yeah, because I, I didn't want to go to sleep. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to close my eyes. And they yeah. thought, because I kept saying, I don't want to go back. Please don't let me go to sleep. Please don't let me die. They're like, no, calm down. You, they thought I was going crazy. They thought I was hallucinating or something because, you know, and I can still smell it. That's how, in the whole room, I can still smell. I can never forget that sulfuric, sulfur uh, smell, you know. Uh, you know, I can still feel it and hear it, you know. And it, it was just... Um, yeah, it, it, to be back in my body, it let me know the difference between the spiritual and the physical realm. It took me a couple of weeks to get over that feeling of feeling uncomfortable in my own body. Mm, wow. it, it took a couple of it took a few weeks for me to get used to the rhythm of being in my body um, as I healed. Wow. You know, because it felt so weird. It literally felt like like I was wearing clothes or wearing extra clothes. It felt off timing, like you know, it just felt I it just hard to explain. Yeah. You know, I felt the same way. You're the first one, Dominic. You're the first one that said that, explained it that way. And it just kind of resonated mm -hmm. with me because I felt like a foreigner in this world. I felt like my body was uh, uh, was yeah. foreign to me. Same thing, yeah. different reason. Yeah. I longed for heaven yeah. and you right, didn't want right. to go back yeah. to yeah. hell. No, no, so. <laughs> no, no. I'm, thanks for the confirmation. But no, yeah, that's that's real. Yeah, That's real. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because there, there are more. Uh, I, I've done a number of uh, teachings on uh, our makeup. You know, obviously the body is a no brainer, yeah. but then there's the spirit of the, and the soul. You know, Jesus talked to Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you not, shall not enter the kingdom of God. So that's the spirit coming alive for the believer. Yes. But you're, yes. you're, the soul experience is for anyone. I mean, the soul lives yes. on forever as well. So the soul Amen. can go to hell or heaven. Yep. But the spirit can only go born in the new spirit that's alive can go to heaven. It goes back, yes. So I'm yes. Gonna, so it's this is so fascinating to me because there seemed to be, correct me if I'm wrong, that there was this inkling of I really do want Jesus when you were in hell. I do mm -hmm. I really do. I mean, I really there's something in you. I don't know if it was your, you said your grandmother, I think. Yes. Um, was there like, uh, I really, you know, I haven't given up on God completely. Um, right. That was there. That like got you through every time it. You had a regret, yeah. Every time. And it was constant. The regret, the regret, it made you miss him as if you knew him your whole life. It made you. 
like if you disappointed someone you truly love, even though you didn't think that you knew them. So each each pain of regret, each form of time you feel that regret, it was a reflective state of what you could have had with him and how loving he really is. You know, even if you didn't know him, you know him in those forms of regret. When he's showing you the invitations, he's always been with us, you know, through the worst times, you know, through the bad times. He let us know that we're not immune to the things. Just because we're believers does not make us immune to the things that are, that can happen to us in life. But the difference is, like he tells us, that he is with us. That's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. We know yeah. he's with us through anything. And you That's had the, that in hell, believe. right? Yeah, and, and no, but see, no, what I had in hell, it was so overwhelming. It was so, t I didn't even muster anything. And the only thing I kept thinking about, what really stuck out, I want to tell people this. And it's a weird fact to think about. But there's like 1.8 million so gods, I think, small GODs that are worshipped here on this earth. Mm -hmm. Give or take, right? But he, our Lord is the only one that gets hated on or mocked the most. Yeah. Out of 1.8 million, have you noticed that? Out of all of those small GODs. You can make fun of anybody Lord else's religion, but the Christian religion, you can mock. Yeah. And then that's when I realized I said it's the truth. Yeah. That's when I... He's the truth, you know, and you start seeing all the invitations. You start seeing everything playing back, every conversation that you ever had. People can't fathom that. Every conversation that you ever had, every person that you heard with your words. It's like I was trying to tell people there's a section of hell that the most part that people didn't understand, you know, was gossiping. Hmm. Hell, there's a section of hell that is filled with more gossipers than anything. Gossiping. That was the biggest biggest section that, that you I've encountered was uh -huh. gossip gossipers. Wow. It was sea, a seas of people. Gossipers. And these demons were having a field day with them because most of them were so called Christians. Mm. Do you know what they do to so called Christians who are lukewarmers, mm. who've been rejected? How much fun they make of you, how much fun they have torturing you because you've been rejected. They laugh at you. They call us stupid humans. They laugh at you because you were re rejected by your so-called father, like a nan, nanny, nan type of energy, mm -hmm. like a, you know, oh, oh, it is uh yeah, gossiping. So people, please, people don't understand how much damage that does in the spirit realm when you gossip. And or and even if you're standing in, in the way by it, even if you're not gossiping, even if you're listening to it. You're getting held accountable for that. Mm. You're getting held accountable. Even just listening, you're giving energy and credence and acceptance to that sinful behavior. The Father does not like gossiping at all. Mm -hmm. Please, don't stay away from it. And have yeah. you noticed a lot of people that I've, I've encountered who, who are gossipers, they get a high from it. Mm -hmm. And that high that they're feeling is the high that the same thing they're feeding that yeah. demon. Yeah, See, That's the high that they're feeling. That feeding that that demonic force that's in them. That's why they get that high. They're mm -hmm. feeling remnants of to what the demon is feeling from what they're feeding it by gossiping. Yeah, that's why they're addicted to it, and they get power from it because exactly it's like a bully. You know, it's uh, the 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 bully starts talking uh, trash about somebody, and and that person doesn't want to be labeled that same way. So that person pro you know, joins the bully. And that's how these, yes. these people who are the gossipers, the ones who are yep. putting down others, you know, it's the, it's the second commandment that Jesus gave, love yes. thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. Uh, first, uh, love God, uh, yep. you know, foremost. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's incredible. The reason I, yes. I, I thought about that God and God, obviously he did have his hand on you. Uh, obviously, we know today uh, why your ministry is so strong. But you said when you were there, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you had the sense that he was with you even then. Yes, because um, a lot of things, I got tortured a lot. I had uh, some demons pretty much rip part of my jaw back so bad and pour hot lava down my throat. Um, but I didn't. I felt the pain, but the pain that I was supposed to feel was buffered. I mean, I say it was softened, and that had to be him. I think he was giving me just enough, you know, like I said, a spanking, so to speak. 
you know, because I look at it now and and because the pain that the people were feeling that were being tortured is so bad on the scale that is so bad. I wasn't feeling that type of pain. Hmm. I wasn't feeling that. Mm. That well, that's why I know he had to be with me. And also, the way I kept moving from department to compartment to compartment as well, and the way some of the demons looked at me, and then they just looked back away as if I was being. They saw me, and a lot of them did see me to the point where I was being tortured. But then some of them on different compartments just saw me and just looked back away, back to what they were doing. So it's mm. as if I was protected by something. So in hindsight, and then like I say, when I came back into my body, just that one split touch from him. It was him. Mm-hmm. It's the most wonderful. He is the most, I mean, like, can't even fathom. <laughs> who wouldn't want to serve? Like, I mean, like, you can't even, <laughs> who wouldn't want to serve a God like ours? Who yeah. wouldn't want to serve our Lord? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, our Lord, Jesus Christ, I tell you, I just, it says, look. I can't even explain it. You have remnants of it. You had an experience <laughs> of the love and the power of that, you know, and I only spilled only experience yeah. a little teeny and that alone right there. That that's enough to last me for the rest of this life. Yeah. Now you, you got me it? smiling. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. smiling so much when we were in hell there, but uh now you got me yeah, smiling. No, 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 yeah. No. He knew your heart. He knew your heart. Yeah. Yes. He knew. Amen. He knew Amen. that you would be preaching it it would be you know people being saved he knew Amen. he knew that you wanted him he knew that you wanted him yeah and there are those i i have to tell you that somebody who had a will forever remain nameless had a hell experience and then um you know denied uh jesus mm. after this did not wake up and then uh you know died thereafter and that haunts me to this day that this person, even though they had this experience of um, of hell, um, they they still that wasn't enough of a wake up call, and then they yeah. died after. And and I, you know, it doesn't haunt me in that I know that God's uh, God's knowing is is all powerful all-knowing he's all-knowing so Amen. he knows the heart of everyone and there's some people their heart is so cold so uh yes. so stone cold uh that they're of what the bible talks about the reprobate mind and they're just not yes. no matter Amen. who does what you can tell them till they're you're blue in the face they're just going to reject Jesus, and they're the ones. Oh, I go through it day. We go through it a lot, you know, because we are, we do have our street ministry, so we're out there on the streets a lot, and we encounter things on the front line. I'm trying mm-hmm. to tell people, uh, this war, it is so real. It is real. Mm-hmm. I need people to get bold, get courageous, get get prepared, get make sure uh, your relationship is the center. Don't put God first. Make him the center of your life. Mm-hmm. That's beyond first. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the things that are already happening, the enemy is ramping up, and uh, you can just see it. I don't have to even argue or debate about it. You can just get, just experience this life for yourself. Mm-hmm. You can feel it everywhere, especially if you have discernment, especially if you're a believer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it speaks for itself. I don't have to do any convincing. I'm not here to convince people. I'm not here to debate. I'm here to just uh, to deliver a package. Yeah. You know, whatever people do with that package is up to them. But they've been warned. Mm-hmm. They've been warned. Yeah. Our father is nothing but a loving God, but he is also stern and very mm-hmm. authoritative. The bar has not moved. Mm-hmm. The earth and the church has been evaded in a lot of ways and has set the bar and lowered the bar mm-hmm. to the father standards. The father standards have never changed. Yeah. But mankind and generation and society have changed the standards to make mm-hmm. elbow room and wiggle room for sinning. But yeah. the father did okay that change. Yeah. So we guys, we need to get back to basics, get back to relationship so he can show us the proper way. Mm-hmm. You know, he loves relationships. He loves us. He loves us. Yeah. But he doesn't violate our free will and he doesn't like us to go to hell. He doesn't want to. It hurts him for us being there. Yeah. But the fact is, this is the reality of it. You all we, responsibility and accountability for the choices that we make. Yeah. We either use. I, hey, I, I tell everyone I gave up my free will. I don't want it. I don't want it. And then that's when I got my biggest freedom. 
is when I gave it to the father. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? <laughs> is when, when people think you become a slave to the father, that's when you're most free, you all. Yes. <laughs> that being dead is. to self, again, the Bible exactly. talks about it, is to yes. be alive with the Lord. I mean, yes. it, it, that made... That is so absolutely true. You know, that's that's a that's a paradigm shift, you know, to lose one's life is to gain one's life through Christ. Amen. You know, that Amen. that is that people don't understand that. But yeah, if we uh, just give it up, surrender. I mean, there's no yes. reason to hang on to and and also uh, to your point, Dominic, um you know, if we're spending like, uh, I don't know, two minutes out of the day with the Lord, you know, and we're done, we've punched our clock. I mean, he, the, if the Holy Spirit's in us, is born in, a, again, believers, why are we ignoring him 99% of the time? You're right. And you know what's so uh, interesting? I came up with the Lord, and I say, the Lord used me, thank you, uh, Lord, used me to come up with a challenge. Uh, it was called the time challenge, but my ministry, I uh, call it the moral challenge. Mm -hmm. I'll ask anybody just to try this challenge. Okay. All you have to do is take a, you know, a notebook. It's only for your own personal use only. You take a pen and a pad. You write before you go to bed and you have to be honest with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. It's only for your eyes only. But you to be honest. You put the day's date and you say, who won my time for today? Was it the world or was it God? Hmm. Just put like it. just one word, world of God. Mm -hmm. But then by the end of the week, you tally up. Who won your week? Was it God or was it the world? Mm -hmm. And when you see the results, if you're honest with yourself, it's going to really scare you. It's really going to make you really see how you're spending your time. Yeah. So try It's called the moral challenge. Very easy, everyone, but I promise it, it is a uh, guaranteed results for you to um, kind of just, because the name of the game is time, you all. It's about distraction. Who has the most power to manipulate your, your view of time. That's why the enemy is great right now at, at, at entertaining people, distracting people. There's new songs, new movies every five minutes. There's something new, new gadgets, new this, new that, new the distraction to take you away mm -hmm. from God. That's what it's all about. Yeah. All that time you could have been used to get closer. See, people don't, they, 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 they don't treat God like a real relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, if yeah. you have a real relationship, you have to spend time with that person, right? Mm -hmm. You get to know that person. You respect that person. You're loyal to that person, right? You do things in honor of that person. Yeah. But we treat God like he's a fairy tale, as if he's not yeah. the ultimate right. and only personality. He is the ultimate personality. So you got to yeah. treat him as that such. Yeah. So, you know. And don't discount that, you know, a lot of times we discount what God is saying to imagination. Oh, that's just my imagination telling right. me that. Well, if it's good, it's of yeah. God. So... Uh, you know, uh, yes. Lord and I are having conversations through the day and sometimes he admonishes me, you know, says, Hey, uh, he really did that. I, I really, and he, it's a good admonishment. I've never been admonished yeah. so nicely from anyone as I from God. He says, Amen. okay, I now let's, concur. let's I get concur. it right. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Let's get it right. I don't want you to be hurt by this. So, uh, do it right <laughs> the next time. So that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, that, so it's gotta be that, that, uh, the moral clock's gotta be in your new book. And you have yes, one. the moral challenge. Yes, the moral challenge. The moral challenge, challenge yes. is in your new book. So if in, you're yeah. watching this before May, it's coming out in May. Yes. Three minutes, 40 47 se seconds. seconds. My hell testimony. Hell. Yes. yes. In hell. Three yes. minutes and 47 seconds. My hell testimony. You all. And uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a blessing. Uh, you know, it's an honor. Well, we'll be noting that uh, you can catch it also when it comes out on our website. We'll note it on RandyK.org, on uh, MyFamilyWorldwide.org as well. We'll have that posted. We'll also send out a reminder when uh, when it's out and available uh, to you. Yes. And, thank you. Uh, also, yeah, they also can you. go to BlessedToBeChosen.com. BlessedToBeChosen.com. Yes, and NarrowPathSociety.org also. And uh, people, we do have a prayer line for mm -hmm. those who need prayer uh, in emergencies. The first number is 763-447-8562. Uh, that is 763-447-8562. You're not alone. Um, you, you know, and uh, we're here to pray with you, not just for you. We're here to pray with you because we're all in this together, you all. We have mm -hmm. we have the same enemy, but we definitely, most importantly, have the same father. Yes. You know. 
Amen. Uh, also, if you want to get in touch with me to have, uh, you can call uh, 320-247-9584. So wow. if you want to get in touch with me, yes, I'm very accessible. Um, you know, very busy. You know, I may take a while, but I, I like to get in touch. People are shocked uh, when I do get in touch with them because I'm very passionate and I really do. I, I really take this seriously. Um, I found my eternal purpose, my eternal career, and it's work is for him. Everything's for him. You know, right. it's not about me. So well, you're you're really asking for it to give out your number. So we will oh, I will yeah, take you up do. on it. Yes. We'll no, put it in the body do. of this message please all do. of those please contact do. information so you can get in touch with uh, Dominic Morrow and uh and his ministry and that yes, uh, number. Do. So uh yes, we'll have all of that in the in the body of this message. So Dominic, I um yes. I know a lot of lives are going to be saved right now because I know people have referenced this interview to others who mm. think all Christians are hypocrites and this and that and, yep. you know, mm -hmm. all the yep. excuses like I used to as an agnostic and, yep. you know, the enemy is trying to pity uh, ourselves against each other uh, in every which way today. So I know that you have an anointing on you right now to pray for our audience to break yes. bondages, to uh, bring people to a point of salvation in Christ yes. uh, and, and, and initiating the relationship and strengthening the relationship with uh, sure. Jesus Christ. So would you be yes. kind enough to uh, to pray for our audience, please? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege, of course. Thank All you. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, we approach your throne always with a sense of gratitude, but also with a sense of urgency. Father, I just ask your presence and just, just everything that was said here today. And thank you so much because they were your words and they're nothing but the truth. Father, so I just ask you to put a hedge of protection over everyone who have listened and will listen to, to this interview. Father, and just touch their hearts and just put a hedge of protection over their families, their finances, their minds. But most importantly, put a hedge of protection over their relationship with you. Father, I ask you to give them the boldness, the courage to see you in all things, to choose you before all things. Because, Father, we, we're running out of time. Father, I just ask you to give them the discernment to be able to see the enemy, the ploys and the tricks and the deceiving plots and the things to always protect themselves with you, to be wrapped around you. The whole life is about you, to be about the Father's business, just like you were, Lord. We love you so much. Lord, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, let the Holy Spirit continue to fill us and just manifest, manifest in everything that we do. Please, Lord, forgive us when we fall short and just, just, we, we just so grateful and show so much gratitude for your patience with us. You know, you're very patient with us and, and please thank you. And the only gift that we have, Lord, is obedience. So just give us the right frame of mind and just stay focused to be obedient, Father. And we love you. Thank you so much and protect us all. All the things we thank you in your son's name, Yahshua, also known as Jesus Christ, by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's a great prayer, brother. And, uh, you know, don't, don't leave this without being confident that on the day that you leave this world, that you'll be in heaven and not in hell. Amen. Uh, Amen. For what Amen. he did on the cross Listen. for you. Uh, Amen. He did it for you. He did it exactly for you. Um, and if it was just you in the world, he would do it, uh, would have done it uh, just for you. And so that's the way he sees you as the most important person in the world. But if you don't have a relationship with him, then you, he can't save you. So you've got to have that relationship. How do you have the relationship? Well, it's like uh, what Dominic had said, and, and we've talked about here. You've got to surrender your life over to Jesus Christ by asking first for forgiveness. I mean, we've all messed up. We've all sinned. And so you have to acknowledge that at first. Second is you have to ask the Lord God for forgiveness for that sin against him. And also you have to forgive everybody else who's offended you. And that's going to be a hard part. So once you've done that, you've invited then, invite Jesus Christ to become Lord of your life. That means that the Holy Spirit um, becomes a resident of you and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and there's a celebration in heaven going on for you. So you're destined for heaven. 
So uh, I want to thank you so much, Dominic, for being with us today. This has been. Oh, no, thank you for having me. It was an honor and a blessing, you know, and um, thank you. My wife is a huge fan as well. So, you know, uh, definitely thank you. And we, we you're, you're, you're a blessing. Appreciate oh, I, it. I had a pleasure of meeting her. Does she want to show up on the camera here before we go? Yes, Come back. You All right. Come Hi. Now you're a famous yes. couple here. There you go. <laughs> okay, so very good. good. Excellent. All right. We met uh, earlier. So yes, yes. thank you again so much. Thank you. So let's end on this uh, very, very positive note. And that is, yes. if you are in Christ Jesus, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take care and God bless. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org, where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.